Ever stood in an empty room and felt you weren't alone? Psychic investigator Andy Matthews has. There's some kind of depression there. We need to investigate further tonight. Hopefully we can find some evidence of a haunting. For ten years, he's been chasing the spirits of the dead. And he's not the only one. I believe in the survival of the human spirit. I've heard it. Marion Goodfellow is one of the UK's leading mediums. I was born on Halloween, just before midnight, and I am the seventh daughter of a seventh daughter. Okay. Something's down there. <laughs> the PSI team are all about the science of ghost hunting. We won't be able to see if there's anything coming through and hopefully hear what they're saying. Our aim is to find evidence to support the theory that life exists after death. Together, using clairvoyance, historical data and an arsenal of high-tech equipment, they're investigating Northern Ireland's most haunted places. Oh, there's something banging around somewhere. Something banging around There we go, yes. They believe the question is, do you? I'm a paranormal investigator, although uh, I also work on the psychic side as well. I'm an evidence gatherer, and then I bring this forward to the team, the team bring their evidence to me, and then we analyse everything. And ultimately, you know, we're trying to get to the bottom of, uh, of the stories behind uh, the locations we're in. It's great to be back in Northern Ireland. I mean, I love the scenery, I love the people, and I love the haunted places. It's got everything. And there's so much more to see, do and investigate. I could spend my whole life over here. I'm headed across the River Foyle in search of a grand old house with a really sinister legend attached to it. A tale of obsession, tragedy and forbidden love that brought murderers to the gallows not once, but twice. Now, I don't know about you, but that's what I call a ghost story. Prehen House an imposing 18th century manor on the outskirts of Londonderry. Behind the Georgian splendour of these walls, it's said, lie the roots of one of Derry's most infamous ghost stories, the legend of half-hanged McNaughton. Today, Andy's arranged to meet Colin Peck, a descendant of the original owner, Andrew Knox, and a firm believer in the mansion's supernatural legacy. Hey, Hello, Andy, Andy nice Matthews. Nice How are you? you well. What How a mean, place. It's amazing. We're alive. <laughs> Andrew Knox was MP for Donegal when he and his family took up residence at Prehen in 1740, unaware of the tragedy that awaited them. Andrew Knox was living here, and along comes John McNaughton, his old friend, and he had lost all his money gambling, and he had nowhere to go apart from his childhood friend, Andrew Knox and Andrew Knox has him in as a member of the family and he lives here and um, all goes swimmingly. This house guest, however, would soon outlast his welcome. Knox's daughter, Mary Ann, was just 15 years old when she fell for the rakish McNaughton. Later, when Knox discovered that his former friend had tricked his daughter into a secret marriage, he banished him from the house. Mary Ann's infatuation would soon fade. But for years, McNaughton continued to stalk his young bride. In order to escape him, the father tried to take her down to Dublin, where he was going to sit in Parliament. And about 10 miles down the road, McNaughton appears on horseback. And then he approaches the carriage and shoots into it. And it mortally wounded her. It took her, I think, 10 hours to die. And it's in this room that Mary Ann's body was laid out after she was murdered. McNaughton was sentenced to the gallows, but he didn't go through a, a trap door in those days. He were just dumped off. But when he jumped off, the rope broke, and he fell to the ground, and the tradition of the broken rope and the gallows held that you could walk away. And he said, no, I'm claiming the gallows again because no one will ever call me half-hanged McNaughton. And so he climbed the gallows and jumped off again. But ever since, he's been called half hanged McNaughton. What particular parts of the building has, uh, what we'll say, McNaughton's ghost been seen, felt? Or... Yeah, he rampages around the upper, the upper floors. Does he? Yeah. Can we go and have a look? Yes, certainly. Rampages? Oh, yes. Oh. 
Is there any one particular room within the house that you would say is the most haunted? The ghost room. We have the ghost room. Wow. Look at all these pictures. It's like the eyes are following you. So what room is this? So this is the ghost room. Ah. People who I don't particularly know very well have slept in this room and they all come down and report the same experience. Without any prior knowledge beforehand? With no prior degree. knowledge, no. And what exactly happens then? What happens is the bed sinks down. And they all report the same thing. It's just if you're lying there, your eyes are closed, and someone gets into bed with you. And I have to say that it, it happened to me once as well. well I, I like the ghosts, and they make me feel at home, and I know I'll be joining them at some stage in the future. So this ghost actually gets into the bed as well as sitting on it, it actually gets in? It actually gets into bed with you. And could you, can you... Can, you know, and then you reach over to see what's going on and there's nothing there. And typically some people report voices beforehand. Mm. I'm just wondering why this particular bed, I mean, does it happen in other bedrooms? Uh, it does, yes. Despite the ghostly reputation of Prehan House, family friend Leon Latter is resolutely sceptical but even she's had an unsettling experience here. I had, I had just gone to bed as normal, and I was curled up, and I felt as if I was being hugged from behind. You know, I was sort of in the, the fetal position, and I could feel someone tucked into my very shape behind and being held very, very tight. So I was quite nervous, and I did notice that the bed beside me was slightly raised, and as I moved over towards the bed, head came over, and as if you were being the one was letting you fall. I switched the light on, but I didn't see anything. I seen absolutely nothing. I, I was just aware of the feeling, the touch, and the rays in the bed. I think if I was someone that did believe in ghosts, I would have probably been a lot more frightened. But I was quite nervous. That's, the light has been on from there ever since. No. It's got everything, this place. Legends, love, romance, tragedy. At the moment, though, it's very quiet. It doesn't feel haunted. It feels very calm and relaxed. But I've been in these kind of situations before in these type of locations. And generally, after dark, when things start to settle down, the house settles down, then, you know, we may get something starts to happen. So I'm really looking forward to bringing Marion in to see what she can pick up, because I'm picking virtually nothing at the moment. Unlike Andy, medium Marion Goodfellow knows nothing about the legend attached to Prehan House, and that's the way she prefers to work. The less she knows, the more she feels. It's really, really important that I know nothing about the place where I'm going. It would only interfere with what I perceived spirit to be giving me. Um, it would cloud my judgment, and I would just be muddled. Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't know whether it was their thoughts or my own thoughts. I have a little bit of information, though. I have had a visitation. If you like, it's a bit like a, a daydream while you're awake. This um, gentleman appeared in my mind, and he's told me to look in the bedchamber, and that all is not what it seems. Another lovely day. <laughs> Hi, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's cold. Oh, it certainly is. I'll warn is. you, I'll warn what you. What a lovely location. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you nothing about it. All right, so I just want you to go in there, wander around and see what you pick up yourself. All right, lovey. OK? Yeah, yeah you trust me, do you? Mm -hmm, absolutely. <laughs> Brace yourself. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Oh, beautiful. names ricocheting through my head. It's a woman's voice that's coming forward, trying to get this lady that's speaking to me, trying to get her name. She was a great letter writer. She would have written things down. And I'm asking her to write her name down so I can see it. What's your name? Show me. Show me. Hello. 
It's a double-barreled name. I feel this lady is Anne Mary. Or Mary Anne. It's something like that. Although she has curls down the side of her face, that's not the lady I'm seeing. Let's have a look at this one. Yeah, more that one. That's the lady. I've met lots and lots of ghost hunters. Um, that's not what I do. I try to give them a voice. One that they have, but that not everybody can hear. Having found, unprompted, the only likeness that exists of Marianne, Marion continues into the library, where the old family Bible confirms what she's just discovered. Oh, look at this. We've got Mary Ann, was born here. I really feel that the lady that will like to write everything down, perhaps this is what she was trying to show me. Wonderful. Wonderful. It's always going to be them that communicate with me. I can't demand anybody comes to me. I don't think there's anybody that can do that. It's basically been me be learning to be patient and learning to, well, if you like, encourage them to give me more and more information. So far, the only lead Marion has is the bedchamber mentioned by an anonymous spirit she believes contacted her before she arrived. Something terrible has happened in here. There's a secret somewhere and I'm just not getting it. I think that's probably what he means is all is not as it seems. I wouldn't say that there's a feeling of great happiness for me to be here. Um, but a means to an end. So you've had an hour to walk around this magnificent house. It's been amazing. I went into what this room, the drawing room first. Yeah. She uh, said a girl came forward by the name of Mary Ann. And Mary Ann was obviously, as, as we know, she was tied up with John McNaughton. So she picked the name up straight away. Incredible stuff, really. Again, fantastically, of all the pictures in that drawing room, Marion picked out Mary Ann's picture. And then she went on to explain that she said there was a secret here. I mean, the gentleman said it's not all as it seems. Well, in fact, I have to tell you now that this house has a legend attached to it of half-hung McNaughton. Now, this guy fell in love with Andrew Knox's daughter, who was very, very young, and then tragically, he killed her, oh, and her body yes. was brought back and laid in the room, the first room in that house. And that's where, she, where I sensed her, and that's, that's where, where she came through. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew Knox decided that he would remove his daughter to Dublin on a cold November morning in 1761, very near Mary Ann's 21st birthday. And it was when they were going up the slope at Clough Cor that McNaughton struck and stood out in front of the, the coach and demanded that Mary Ann be released. Well, someone shot at him from the coach, probably Andrew Knox, but he was partially wounded and he then ran to the coach and shot into it. And it's thought generally that Mary Ann, trying to protect her father, threw herself across him and she was shot instead. McNaughton was found um, guilty and uh, sentenced to the gallows. 
and uh, he was buried in Straban graveyard. For more than two centuries, the ghost of John McNaughton is said to have haunted Prehan House. But if the murder he committed, the gallows he hung from, and the grave where his body lies are miles away, why would McNaughton's spirit linger at the house? Perhaps, as Marion believes, things are not as they seem. If there is a ghost to be found, the paranormal study and investigation team will use their technology to detect its presence. The only proof they're interested in is scientific proof. For some, their aim in this type of work is ghost hunting. Our aim is to find uh, evidence to support the theory that life exists after death. Whether you're a believer or not, you have to be skeptical before you come to a location. Look for all the natural phenomena. Look at the psychological issues that may be there before you even start to look at a possible paranormal reason for what's going on. The haunted bedroom seems to be the focal point up here anyway, so if we can set up the thermal imaging camera in there... Also... Keen to make the most of the remaining hours of darkness, Andy briefs the team so they can begin their experiments as quickly as possible. Let's just set everything up, sit back and see what happens. You never know. Basically, this is a little system I've devised, and it's called the ITC Orchestra. ITC is Instrumental Transcommunication, and it's basically the apparent ability of picking up paranormal activity on electronic equipment, and that's done by video and audio. You need to need a, the angle looking down is, is best. I'm a believer in the possibility that life exists after death, but yeah, there's other team members who would be completely skeptical. Uh, and I think that's a healthy balance for a team to have because it keeps everyone in check uh, and your, your mind's not running away with it. If you had a team just of complete believers, everything you see, hear, experience would become a ghost. See, the violin is a natural role. That's a natural amplifier. So I'm going to hook up a microphone to the other part of the violin, which amplifies the room atmosphere plus the tones, and we'll be able to see if there's anything coming through, and we'll be able to clean that up and hopefully hear what they're saying. Right, come on, Tony, bedtime. True to its name, the ghost room is where most of the mansion's paranormal activity is said to occur. Tonight, Tony draws the short straw. Right, so you okay to do this, Tony? Well, I think we'll give it a go. Yeah, you're gonna be in here, it's gonna be complete blackness. Okay. Right, you won't be able to say a thing. Now, I want you to call out some names, okay, that are relevant to the property, okay? So the first one's John McNaughton, okay? The second one is Mary Ann, and the third one is Andrew Knox. Two hours later, Tony has reported nothing from the pitch darkness. Earlier, however, when he called out the name of Andrew Knox, several things happened simultaneously elsewhere, including an unnerving experience for Darren on the stairs below the ghost room. So there's Tony in the bed. That's halfway down the stairs. That's... Is there, are there any Knoxes here? Is there Mr. Knox? While Tony was in the bed, and you were asking him to call out for Mr. Uh, the... Mr. Knox. Oh, it was Andrew Knox. Andrew yeah. Knox and asked out for that at the time, and literally that's that split second. I happened to look up, and as I looked up, I seen a figure. Now, it walked with his head down, and his arms down, and walked from right to left. Was he captured? No. The, the camera angles didn't quite catch anything, right. simply because uh, the door was ajar, and uh, no, yeah. he didn't. It, it you really have to take my word for this one. Oh, I will. Is there, are there any Knoxes here? Is there Mr. Knox? And again, you've called out Andrew Knox, and Andrew Knox ties in, he was the father. And he's the depressive yeah. presence yeah. that you felt. We go to locations, and we are there to try and bring a sense of balance. We're there to try and look for alternative explanations. But, you know, we're honest. Uh, if we find something that we can explain, we'll tell you. Uh, but if we also see something, we have to be honest and tell you that as well, but we did see something. Aside from Darren's apparition, there was another curious reaction to the sound of Andrew Knox's name being called. This time, an electronic voice phenomenon, or EVP, 
captured by Mark's orchestral resonator. We played a bit of white noise, using the violin to amplify the, the atmosphere. Mm. And you, you basically hear Darren asking for the knock, and then there's a bit of a voice comes through, and it's instead of a knock, it's actually something hit the microphone. But the thing about the microphone is I had it completely covered. So you'll, you'll hear it now. What about the voice? What do you think the voice is saying? It almost sounds to me like you should help me. Help me would be one of the most common uh, voice electronic voice phenomena that we do we do get. Well, it is, this is it. I mean, if the, a lot of ghosts start yeah. trapped, well, so they're going to be asking for exactly help. Exactly yeah. what I picked up in the yeah. room. Mm -hmm. That depressed that depression feeling, that, that yeah. awful feeling, almost suicidal. You know, but in this, that room. could this be then the ghost or the spirit of Andrew Knox? Because it was Andrew Knox's daughter Mary Ann that was murdered by John McNaughton, and her body was laid out. In one of the rooms downstairs, he could be still wandering the place in a fit of despair. That's definitely, yeah, you should help me. So he's asked for help. Well, what do you want to do, Marion? For whatever reason, and they're asking for help. You should help me. You should help me. In response to the apparent request for help, which the team believe came from Andrew Knox, Marion will now attempt direct contact. Here in the hall outside the ghost room, she's hoping that any connection with the former master of Prehen House will be channeled through Andy's dowsing rods. Andrew Knox, are you here in this room? You said you wanted help. Do you need our help? Yes. If you can come forward, then maybe Marion can help you. If you can speak, Mr. Knox. Sir. Sir, speak into this. She is happy where she is. He's asking me um, where she is, where, she, where is she, where is she? And I'm presuming that he's asking about Mary Ann. And then he's telling me, but I see her. So I think that's your grief, sir. I think that's your grief. You don't need to stay here. He's here, right in front of me. I've got a, a head like as if it's on fire. I don't know if anybody can pick that up, but my head feels as if it's on fire. You spoke to me. I know you can speak now. All is not what it seems. Mm. What? Can you use the rods? I'm going to ask him some questions myself. OK. Sir, can you not leave this place, sir? No. Could you come with me outside? Could I take you outside with me? Yes. <laughs> That's what he wants me to do. I've just gone cold from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. It's a bridge. Psychic he bridge. He wants a bridge. Psychic yeah. bridge. Yeah, yeah. How can I do that? <laughs> well, we did it once before. It's a long time ago. <sighs> Move slowly, really slowly. Let his energy catch up with us as we're going. Go. Yeah, I feel a bit trembly. Hang on, hang on, wait for him. It's like a trembly energy. When he's in me, he's like... He's making me tremble. My head's burning. Mm.
You there? Yeah, yeah, he's there. I feel different. The pain's gone. Do you, feel, right. do you feel as though it's gone? Yeah, I feel OK. I felt a bit shaky on the stairs, but it's, I feel OK now. From his base in the next room, Mark has been monitoring and recording. Despite the apparent quiet, it seems that Marion's questions did not go unanswered. OK, this is um, it's very interesting. Really? When you guys are out in the next room, you were saying something like, are you here? And then you said, I can feel him. And right after I can feel him, you get. Yeah, I can feel him. I can't Whoa. see anything. Run that again, man. It's Why? great. <laughs> I can't see anything. The recording's riddled with them. Yeah. Stuck inside. I'm stuck inside and then inside, inside. I'm stuck inside, inside, inside. That's fantastic. I mean, I've strived for years to try and prove what I get is real. I, what I feel is real. I believe in the survival of the human spirit and the ability of that spirit to communicate with me. Mm. And for the first time in my life, I've heard it. There's one last one here I want you to have a listen to. <clears throat> is that help? Yes or no? Just contact. I mean, that that is intelligent That's contact. Amazing, amazing. We, we've never had that, Mark. No. We've never had a, a. We've been having a conversation. Is that help? Yes or no? Anything is possible. Yeah. And ultimately, perhaps somebody like myself, and I'm not saying I'm unique by any stretch of the imagination, but somebody like me is going to prove the survival of the human spirit and its ability to communicate. If we have come so close to that today, mm. I don't think I'll sleep tonight, do you? For the first time in a long time, I'm, I don't think I'm stuck for words. <laughs>